Welcome back, guys. It's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Update. Today, we're looking at popped crypto bubbles. Do I think this entire thing has just come to an end? Of course not. Second chance to buy. This is what I'm looking at here. But be cautious. Obviously, the risks are increasing and the rewards are getting smaller. That's the diminishing returns as we continue through the rest of the cycle. Don't be fooled. It's not going to get extra, extra big like we saw from 2020 to 2021. So today we're looking at the popped bubbles. We'll go through that on the charts and a couple of other cryptos which I like the look of. And I've mentioned this to our Patreon and Facebook members. So the Investor Accelerator, I'll show you a bit about that in just a sec. I'm accumulating ETH. Let's look at the charts. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, all the good stuff so that you can follow the journey along. You can always unsubscribe or unlike the video later if you don't find any value from it. So first piece is right here is fear and greed. Fear is now 31. Yesterday was 46. So we're getting closer to around that 15 level. And I guess if you're new to the channel, we were looking at the fear and greed index as a strategy to be buying Bitcoin at the lows through May, June, July, picking up Bitcoin for an average price of $34,000 using this one tool alone. Um, that was at 15 or under. We'll touch on that in future videos, but for now, the fear is getting nice and deep into that red zone. That's where we want to buy. The market caps are at 2 trillion, so $2.06 trillion, still holding pretty well. Somewhere around that 1.8 is a good support level. Um, we'll have a look at that in future videos as well, but essentially we want to look at Bitcoin, ETH. I've got an exercise to do on ETH today because it's one of the ones that I'm accumulating on this dip. Uh, update of ADA, FTT. Let's look at Theta and Atom as well. So I've got some stuff I really want to show you there. Um, ETH is at 3,200. Cardano's $2.40. Binance, 406. Solana, number six. $185. We peaked out at about $216. Uh, that's what we got to so far. I think it's got a little bit further to go. And of course, Bitcoin is now at 45000 Now, this always comes up. The market falls and someone has, writes, oops, it crashed again. This didn't age well, blah, blah, blah. And uh, obviously, you can see my reply here is, it's a 4% crash. What? I didn't get it. I don't get people that are just worried about a few percent crash. That's all that the market had done. Look, we're at five now, six now. Remember, this is cryptocurrency. If we go down 20, 30, 40, 50 percent, it's still just another day. That's just a correction in the trend. The, the main thing that you need to do here, the biggest thing you have to uh, have belief in and obviously do your research to have an understanding of what part of the cycle we're in is, do you think it's a bull market and it's a correction? That's what it's called, correction in a bull market. Or do you think you're in a bear market and we've just rallied in a bear market and now we're continuing with the bear market? That's usually where the scare comes in is if you believe it's a bear market and the market is going down, but you got greedy and you were buying on the way up thinking, oh, maybe I'll be wrong. Uh, it's, a, it's a bull market. I'm going to keep buying. Oh no, the market's down four, five, six percent. I'm losing my crap. I need to get out of the markets. This is where the uncertainty comes from. And it's from within. You've got to really decide, are you in a bull market or are you, are you in a bear market? Do you want to be buying in the bull or are you trying to make some money on the bear market rallies? Really decide that. Know what it is you're doing and then everything else becomes way more clear. You can see Polkadot, we're down 8 Terra Luna has been going on a tear. It's at 35% up today, broken through some of those highs. Uh, everything else in the top 20 is doing not so well. Well, except for Avalanche and Algorand also doing pretty good. Uh, ICP down a little here at 7%. Looking at that as a trade on the BTC chart, which we've talked about. Uh, Matic also down 7 Let's get across to the first thing, and this is Bitcoin. Oh my God, down again 3.3%. So that was yesterday's bar. We've just started the new day a few hours ago now. You can see we've got 20 hours and 46 minutes to go until the next day's close. But from the top of yesterday to the bottom, 6%. Really, if, if you're finding yourself freak out and uh, you know it's crashed, maybe they're not freaking out. They're just saying, oops, it crashed. It's like, mate, look at the lows. That's what we want to look at. If this starts to break beneath the next low, 
no problems. We're getting on a good crash. We're getting on a, a crash which could be coming. My purple box here is the area that I'm comfortable with for this section of the market to continue, the market going up. Reason being is we have some support levels. We have had some, um, this is support here, which was resistance back through the parts of May and June, poked our heads above, crashed back under. We had a bit of resistance here in late June. So somewhere around that 37-ish thousand dollars, give or take, um, the market to fall back to that area, hopefully bounce or wick and then climb back above that, I'm pretty comfortable with. My 50% is at 41,000. The swing low is at 37 and a half-ish thousand. To me, it's just now I'm happy to buy because for me, the bubble has popped and I'm talking about this little area here. At the time, it's a, it's a lot of energy in the market. Just these few days as we started to climb out, one, two, three, four, maybe you want to call it the last two days as it started climbing out. So 48 hours is a long time in crypto. You know that by now. I'm sure many of you have been in crypto for more than 48 hours. If you haven't, let us know in the comments. But that two days there really feels like the the little bubble that has to come as it breaks out of highs and we'll see it on Ethereum. And then it just pops. That's the popping. Here is the previous bubble as it starts to climb out of that first swing. So low to high to low and we climb out of it. And the market has come in and tried to pop this bubble, but it looks like it's holding as support for now, especially this, this swing high. So if we started to get back into that area, no problems, which just means we're going to be probably sideways for a bit longer and starting to figure out what the market wants to do. You know, if we get into this zone, you can see here, sideways, maybe we get some higher lows and it starts to climb its way out again. That's all part of a, a, basically a lengthening period as we accumulate. That's a healthy sign to the market. The not so healthy sign is if we break down really hard on big swings like we did through April and May, and that's going to be a much more extended period. But these these areas of popping is what I like to see to be buying cryptocurrency. So Ethereum is a much clearer example for me. And of course, this is just all my own opinion and how I read the charts, read the markets. You might have your own and say, doesn't make any sense, but this is the way I see it. This reaccumulation testing what we have above us. So, all right, there were no one, no one selling. Cool, time to buy. Let's see what we can do. Selling came in, pop. So the bubble is these few days here. Market pops. Will we come back and test a bubble from this area? And this is the same period that's on Bitcoin, remember? That's that period there. First higher swing out. There's the bubble. There's the next bubble. So ETH for me, bubble one. Well, this is the second bubble, but this is a potential little bubble in here that might need to be tested. Spike and come back out. So pop the bubble, pop the bubble. We can move on. And this lines up really well with some 50% zones. And also previously talking about 2,400. So there's a level there around 2,400. You can see there's a swing low. There's a top. That's all good signs. And then more buying for me in this area. It's hard for me in my style to keep buying through all of this. I like to buy on breakouts. So yes, I can be buying here at around 3,400, knowing that the risk has increased because I'm a long way from where we started. And uh, you just don't know whether this is going to be the next stage to throw you to the new all-time highs. But that's the risk I take. I want to see some breakouts. Unfortunately, the volume got low as we started to climb and we needed to come back, pop. Maybe we come back and pop this. We'll wait and see. But for me, I'm happy to continue dollar cost averaging in, buying at these periods because I like a reset. A bubble pop is a reset for me. So with that in mind, let's have a look to see how the market has done this in the past, which what makes me confident uh, for this zone to be buying. And it can go lower, okay? So right now we've seen a fall from around 4,000 of about 25%. Maybe we get down to, look, as low as 24. I'm not saying it has to go there, but just for numbers sake, there's 24. So that's at about 40%. Should we only go to our 38% line there? So the South Fib. That's $2,600, so 35%. And then the 50% is at around 28. So that's about 30%. So 30, 35, 40%. It's another day in crypto. Let's go back and just check the bubble popping. As we came out of these 
uh, all-time high areas. So the market got away. You can see it did it the same thing again. A little bit of accumulation. Tried to go higher. Pop, pop, pop. Back down. Guess what? Volume was dropping as well on the way up. Cool. All right. Let's keep buying. It's a bit scary. It's very scary. <laughs> That's what the feeling is at that time. But we were holding those support levels at around 1400. We had a few little pops into there. Swing out. Here's a little bubble to get us out of there. Market tried to peak its head up. Okay. Decided to pop the bubble. Pop the next bubble. This is buying. Let's go again. So another attempt. So there's, there's the little bubble as we started to climb. There's the next bubble. There's pop one. There's pop two. All right, so that's the feeling that I get and what I see. So the thinking and the feeling for the market at the moment, which is why I'm still buying and why I'm okay if it goes down further because it doesn't have to happen exactly like it has done in the past. It might just hold up here and then move. So that's why I'm buying here. And if it does go lower, buy here again. Um, has it done it again? Well, of course, I've gone through and checked this and <laughs> I'm happy to <clears throat> look at my research because this is the areas that I was buying on the way up in 2020. So I remember these quite vividly. The market bubble, little move up and the moves are getting smaller and smaller. And the final one here, the final move up, pop. All right. And the strength here was that we couldn't pop this other bubble. So we're floating, floating above this bubble here. So around $250 to $300. All right. It gave us two opportunities. Down. There's the first. You miss it? Okay, no problems. You still can buy it in around $340 to $400. Next attempt, it gave you another opportunity to buy. So this next point could be another opportunity to buy. Of course, none of this is financial advice. Please, you have to make this feel confident in your own testing. And to me, this is how I trade and it works for me. So make it your own. Otherwise, it'll just feel like Someone else is working, you're listening to someone else and you won't trust it. That's the biggest thing. Okay, the big, another big note here is the higher low. It's so subtle, but if you're just looking at numbers, okay, it went down 3%, it went down 7%, you'll never see this. You'll never see that this low and this low, this one is slightly higher than this low and then we moved again and we made another higher low. That is all signs of strength that people are coming into the market and buying the market at slightly higher prices every time. So that's bullish support. <clears throat> so that happened again on the way out. So this is in a bull market. I had determined to myself that that was a bull market. We come back to 2017, happened again. You can see it here. We popped this bubble. There's about 70% down. There's another attempt to enter. We come up, we accumulate, we ride up and then pop. So let me get in a little bit closer on this one so we can see. This is the move out, the reaccumulation, the move trying to get back to this previous high because we just had a really big strong market up to around 400 bucks in early to mid 2017. And then this zone popped and popped again on the way out. All right, reaccumulation, pop our heads up, pop it back down. All right, it does that time and time again. And it gives us many opportunities. Opportunity one, opportunity two, another opportunity here because I called it 2A, 2B. It's on the same trend. It just happens so often. And then this is the final leg out here. So we actually made our way above the previous high and the previous high, moved up and up again. And eventually that bubble popped to be the final popping of all the bubbles. And from that breakout point, we had about to about, I think it was about 300%. That's where the risk reward gets out of hand. You're, you're risking a lot to the downside from that current bull market to make a few hundred percent on the upside. And this is Ethereum back in 2017, early 2018, when it was at much lower market cap values than it is today. So this was the first move out April to June. You're getting about 900%. And then you're risking a lot more from... Uh, the breakout here to the next high, about 300%. Remember from the low to the top is about six, 7,000%. Crazy times back in 2017. So <clears throat> that's me and why I think I'm in, well, we're in a bull market and we're getting a correction. That to me on the chart looks very similar to 
2017. This move up, nice strong move out. We get a pop and another pop and accumulation, which is I think what we'll probably go through now for the next, who knows, couple of weeks, few weeks, maybe a little longer. And then we get this final move into this high. So we're building up for that stage. It needs a little more resting period. Uh, and that's what I'm seeing for ETH, which is why I like this as an accumulation zone. Quick looking, uh, quick look at ADA. We have fallen. Maybe we're doing the same thing. Pop some of those bubbles. Start to accumulate again. This is on the BTC charts. That's what I want to look at. <clears throat> get, look at the strength starting to form as we get above previous tops because I want my investments to be doing better than Bitcoin during this next stage of the Bitcoin bull market, okay? And that's if you believe the market is going to go up. Of course, you have to stick to your own opinions. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very difficult when the market gets super hot. So I see this potentially building up again. Nothing is to say that that has to hold. If we come back down, that would start to worry me because that would then show that Bitcoin would be getting stronger than ADA. But for now, we're holding ground. It's okay. We start to move down for now. I'm okay. We'll keep check checking that. FTT USD. You can see we've moved up. We have accumulated and we have moved up again, accumulated, moved up again, accumulated. It just has not come back down to pop any of these bubbles yet. So I wouldn't be surprised. But overall, this is starting to grow on me and provided we remain above the highs and keep consolidating, that's a good sign for FTT to continue further up. Looking back briefly at the coin market caps, uh, FTT is 73, 74 bucks, $9 billion. This was only a four and a half billion dollars just a few weeks ago. So it has moved quite a lot in that period of time. <clears throat> and for me, this was one of the ones that I did a video on looking at it to go into something more like Binance. You know, I, I think this has the potential to get to that point. So at 9 billion, I still see a lot of room to growth. I still like the look of this chart that it has that room to grow and it is consolidating. Should we break down, of course, get back to these levels and drop down a little further, that would, that would concern me. And I would think, all right, maybe it needs a bit more time to rest. But Look, FTT has proven that it can push and then consolidate at higher levels, which is a hard task to do, but it's getting there. Unlike uh, Theta at this point, it has moved to high grounds and then has popped all the way back. Uh, in terms of Theta Bitcoin, it's basically very close, not exactly, but it's close to where it was at that June low when the market started to take off. So it hasn't outpaced Bitcoin yet. It's still something that I would be looking for provided that the lows hold up. That's always what we want to see, that lows are holding up. And you can see that this was weaker overall because it had lower low after lower low after lower low. So it's trying now very hard to hold itself. Now, the big one, which I had uh, put out to the Patreon guys. So thank you very much. If you guys are over on Patreon, check out the links down below. Their in innovators has sold out, but there are still 69. Enjoy that. Uh, early adopter spaces left at the 49 per month. So exclusive content, complete post archive, weekly market videos that's so coming out on Monday, every Monday, monthly market reports, uh, Patreon only stuff, and then digital downloads as well. So check out that Patreon Investor Accelerator down below, 69 of years left. Adam is something that I talked to the Patreon guys about a few days ago. We are getting a breakout here. So this is what you wanna see if it is a good looking trade setup for the next stage. And these lows are getting higher, slightly, ever so slightly higher during the period where the market was starting to um, hold its, well, it started to fall and everything was just trying to consolidate to make its next move up. So that's what I want to see in a chart rather than theta, which was heading down. And now we're starting to break to new lows again after it tried. So that, that's the difference between the strength of the chart and what the insiders are potentially doing. Not necessarily about the project or the fundamentals itself, but just check, checking the charts to understand which one's stronger, which one's weaker. And so far, we're getting that breakout of the current highs over here. So Adam's looking like a good setup for me. Remember, Patreon link is down below. Update of the SwiftX portfolio. It's now sitting at 19,500 because we've had a pullback on Sol. FTT has also come back a little bit and ADA around stable 
uh, from last time we looked at the SwiftX portfolio. If you guys are in Australia and you don't have a SwiftX account, check it out. Link is down below. $10 of free Bitcoin when you sign up using the link down below. If you already have an Aussie account, get two. It's really Im important in the way I see it. It's really handy to have two accounts when it comes to your cryptocurrency uh, as when markets get really hot, sometimes one of them goes down. It's good to have a backup in case you want to be buying something which uh, you feel is at a good price. So check those out. I'll see you guys at the next video. Make sure you've hit the like, subscribe, bell notification icon. Have a great weekend. I'll chat to you on Twitter and on Instagram or on Patreon and Facebook. Uh, check you in the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.